Oh, hello there. I'm Paul Polino and I'm glad to see you again. Today I want to talk to you about baking, but a different type of baking. Okay, much better. Last week I asked you guys to give me some topic suggestions and I got some really good ideas from you. Thank you so much for sending them. It does help me a lot to prepare content for the channel. If you haven't done so, please consider leaving a comment or you can contact me on my Instagram account. But one of the questions I've got was from my friend Paolo. So he asks, it would be awesome if you could show us what kind of auxiliary maps you usually bake and use while texturing. This is a great question because just like baking is important to make our food taste better, I think auxiliary maps are one of the best ways to achieve photorealism. And in my opinion, taking advantage of the details from our model is, is the keystone of a texture artist's workflow. So I want to answer Paolo's question by giving you an overview of a few essential bakes that I use in my texturing workflow and when do I use them. The first four maps are pretty common, but the last two might surprise you. In the future, I want to make some in-depth videos for each bake and show you my workflow using them. But for now, I'm just trying to lay a foundation and explain these bakes for those who are starting out in texturing. So do not forget to subscribe to the channel. I have a lot of cool stuff coming, okay? Thank you. The first support map is also the most common one. Occlusions are awesome because they give us access to crevices, holes, and the gradient gives us a lot of range to play with with our textures. I usually like to invert my AO and use it as a mask to reach areas of my model that I can't see it. This method is super helpful if you want to create damage masks such as dust, oil, or grime. You can bake occlusion maps in many different programs. I usually bake mine in Substance Designer and Mari. If you want to know more options, I wrote a whole article exploring them. I left a link in the description for you. Curvature maps, also known as edge masks, will isolate the edges of our models and are going to be especially useful for hard surface assets. In my first video of this channel, I talked about how edges in real life are not perfect. We can use this bake as a mask to help us break that perfection. Curvature maps can also be baked in many different programs, and I take advantage of that to get a nice variety of range. I usually bake mine in Substance and tweak the softness by blurring it in Nuke. I also like to use ZBrush to generate a softer curvature mask. My main use for curvature maps is to add damage to my model's edges, but they can also be used to add subtle color variation to our diffuse. There's another trick I use all the time, and don't tell anyone I told you, but I like to use this map in my bump and roughness channels with a flat gray value to make the edges more polished than the rest of the asset, or vice versa. This simple step adds a nice variation to our textures and helps break in the proceduralism. I only started using thickness maps after I used Substance for the first time, and it quickly became one of my favorite bakes. This map looks like an inverted occlusion map, and people mostly use it in the past to fake a subsurface scattering effect in organic acids. But to be honest, it can be used for much more. I use it all the time, even in my hard surface workflows. I can add quick color variations and areas of rust to my roughness and bump. What I love the most about this bake is that it does not look so obvious like AO or curvature maps. For this reason, we don't have to worry so much about breaking up the mask so our textures don't look so procedural. My favorite software to bake my thickness maps is Substance Designer. It's quick and easy. Cavity maps are a must-have if I'm working on organic acids. This mask will help isolate pores, crevices, and all the sculpting details that I might use to improve the quality of my textures. In the description below, you can read the article I wrote explaining how I create my cavity maps in ZBrush and Mudbox. But there's also another workflow I learned a couple of years ago with a talented creature artist, Kael. This method consists of exporting your displacement map out of ZBrush and then using Nuke to grade and create a cavity map. I like this method because it speeds up the workflow quite a lot. Cavity maps can be used to add color variation to your creature, and since it gives us a lot of information from the model sculpt, we can use it to create dirt and damage masks. On top of that, I often use it in my spec maps to add some extra complexity. 
gradients and axis masks were a game changer in my texturing workflow. I use them in any type of asset that I'm working on, could be higher surface, environments, or even creatures. They're a great resource if we want to isolate details on a certain axis of our objects. Some of my favorite gradient tools are in Mari, and they are part of the Mari Extension Pack plugin. This plugin was developed by Jans Kaffetz, and in my opinion, it is one of the best tools for Mari out there. I'll leave the link in the description for you to take a look. The gradient tools in the Mari Extension Pack are great because I can change my mask with ease and it's real time. As I said before, there are many uses for these gradients, but they are especially useful when I want to create a nice dust mask from the bottom with a long fall off. Since I can pivot the gradient easily, I do that and then I overlay some cool texture maps on top to break up the mask. Using normals as masks might sound odd for some of you, but just like gradients, they help me push the quality of my work over the past years. When we first look at these bakes, they just look weird and colorful. How in hell can I use this in texturing? But the magic really happens when we isolate the red, green, and the blue channels. This is the information that we can use in our workflow. When we isolate the channels, some of these maps might look similar to our previous access masks. But sometimes I prefer using this one because it gives me a nice and softer mask to work with. I usually use these maps to add specific color variations, and they're especially useful if I want to create a sun fade effect, for example. To get these maps, I usually use a tool in the Mari extension pack called Custom Surface Normal, or I bake some normal maps in Substance Designer. So let's do a quick recap now so we can remember all these bakes in the future. Ambient occlusion can be used to have access to occluded areas. By inverting this map and breaking up with a texture, we can easily create damaged masks such as dust, dirt, or oil. Curvature maps are mainly used to add some edge wear, but we can also use it to add some color and surface variation. Thickness is one of my favorite bakes to add some color and surface variation, and the best thing about it is that it doesn't look so obvious like AO or curvature. Cavity maps are awesome for us to add some extra level of detail to our organic assets. Axis and gradient maps can save us a lot of time by giving us a nice range of value from multiple directions. And the last one, the surface normal maps, can be super handy to add some extra color variation to our textures, and it can help us isolate specific details of our model. So which bake was your favorite? In the comments below, just leave me a list of your favorite ones so I can prioritize them in the next videos that I make. And that's it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I see you next week.